We are so, so excited that you're here today. Welcome to Freedom Church. Those of you who maybe are visiting with us, maybe it's been a long time since you've come or you come every week, we're so glad you're here. Uh, to also to our family and all of our friends who are watching online, the men and women who are watching at the Boone County Jail, that includes you. We love you guys. Uh, big happy Father's Day to everybody. Today is also Baptism Sunday. We are going to celebrate after each service some lives who have who've decided I have made a personal decision to follow Jesus with my life and now I'm ready to make that decision public. And we are so proud of you, so excited for those who, have, uh, who are doing that today. And if you're here and you know that's a next step for you, you have not taken that step and you didn't come prepared to be baptized, we are prepared for you. We literally have everything you need to be baptized today, including of uh, clothes that you can be baptized in, all of that. And you can, right after this service, when we dismiss those to go get ready for baptism, uh, that includes you. If you didn't sign up, you didn't come prepared, I don't care, we don't care, we are, we're, we're ready to make it happen for you today. And so be dismissed at that time and head back there um, and get ready. But happy Father's Day to all the dads out there today. Come on, give it up for the dads. We've got a photo booth. We're going to have some, some goodies afterwards, some, some manly snacks I'm excited for. It's good stuff. Uh, but before we get into the message today, y'all know it's okay to laugh in church? Yeah, it's okay to laugh in church. And so I, we, got, we, we filmed a video this, uh, the past week and, um, in honor of Father's Day, and I, I pray that it encourages you. Um, that it inspires you and that it makes you literally fall out of your seat laughing at um, the expense of myself and our associate pastor Josh. And um, I think you're going to get a kick out of this today. So happy Father's Day from all of us at Freedom Church. Check this out. Hey everybody. Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there at Freedom Church. Happy Father's Day, Josh. Happy Father's Day, Ryan. These are empty. I don't know. I don't know why we have these. Man, we are excited today to uh, present a little dad challenge. Dads are strong, right? Real strong. Right, we are, we're, the, we're the strongest. And so we're gonna demonstrate that strength today with some dad challenges. You down? I mean, do I have an option? No. Okay, I'm down. Let's do it. For our first challenge here, we are going to let go and walk by faith. Oh. So dads, are notorious for getting up with their kids in the middle of the night, right? Right, we're the ones who always get up. Right, baby's crying, you get up. Right. You're walking through the house and what happens? You step on something. Yes. So in this challenge, we will be leg going of everything and walking across Legos. Josh clearly showed me up in that first challenge, so uh, let's try this one. We're gonna eat baby food. <laughs> we have no idea what this is. Could be peaches, could be chicken. So here we go. I think that's chicken and noodles. I. Ugh, that's squash. This tastes like everything and nothing all at the same time. This is chicken noodles. Let's try this one. Oh, <laughs> hold on. What's that? <laughs> that is not good, whatever that is. This one's better. This one tastes like Thanksgiving. My taste buds oh. can't decipher what this is. <laughs> he I'm gone. Done. I'm done. I'm done. Ryan. Yeah. This is the final challenge. Okay. Are you comfortable right now? Pretty comfortable. I don't believe you're going to be in just a minute. I heard. Because what are we doing? Yeah, we're, we're going to uh, experience a pregnancy simulator. A labor simulator. 
<sighs> I'm not ready for this. Yeah. Oh, that, that is so. Oh, gee! What is that? Oh, that's odd. Does that hurt? It's just weird. It is weird. Uh, this is what labor feels like? Oh! oh. Uh uh. <laughs> That's uh, that's getting more intense. You just got you got to get into your head and breathe, Josh. Breathe. Yeah, I don't breathe out of my head. Mm -hmm. What level is that? Mm -hmm. You guys are both at two right now. Okay. I thought you already went up. Okay. Gosh, here we go. that sucks. <laughs> ah! I don't know if that's what it's supposed to feel like. Oh, that one doesn't feel so good. It feels like somebody's cutting my insides. What level is this? Well, it still says two, but we went two. up. Two! <laughs> okay. Oh, there we go. There we're at three now. That hurts so bad. Are you kidding me, Josh? I'm just acting like it's not there. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh! Oh, my God! Oh, yeah. Oh. Yep, yep. It's kicking up now. It's kicking up now. Ah! Oh. Brian may have been at level four while you were at level two. On well, I think I can tell that. Okay, good, good. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You're done. You're only at four. I'm done. Take it off. I can't. I can't. Stop. 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 stop, stop. It burns the belly button, is what stop. I'm feeling. Stop. Oh. It's getting intense now. Oh. I think I got a bit more in me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, give me one more and I'm probably done. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that was, uh, that was an experience. I didn't like it. Um, Mom, I love you. Sunshine, I love you. Um, I, I, I vote that we should cancel Father's Day and just have two Mother's Days from now on. You guys get more. You guys need more than muffins, mm. more than cupcakes. You you deserve it all. Yeah. Anyway, agreed. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> yeah. I just want to make sure you caught a very important detail in that video, okay? I was at level four while Josh was at level two, okay? She kept going up on mine, but not on Josh's, okay? But clearly he outlasted me, and Josh, you are the better man. I applaud you. Give it up for Josh. Come on. <laughs> in all seriousness no we're not going to cancel father's day although moms come on you guys are awesome you guys are awesome and um that was intense if that's anything like anything close to what labor feels like i'm sorry I'm just sorry but uh in all seriousness we 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 want to honor you dads we want to honor the fathers in this place the 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 men who fight to stay men of character, to be men of integrity. Dads, it's not easy. Sometimes we want to quit. It's hard work, but we stay in there and we keep going and we're not perfect, but we learn from our mistakes. And I just applaud all the fathers in this place. Come on, give it up for the fathers in here. Whether you are the biological father of your child, the stepfather, or if you are a spiritual father, I don't care. If you take responsibility for somebody else, I believe that's a father in spirit, and we just honor it. I believe God has placed a, a mothering and a, a fathering spirit on our church. And, and what does that mean? It just simply means that we have a, we have a grace we have an ability. I believe that God has put a calling on us as a group of people to stand in the gap where there are gaps relationally and to adopt people, to come alongside other people and say, I've got you. We're going to make it through together. And so on Father's Day today, I just honor all the dads and I, 
And I know that there are in this room probably some, some father wounds, we'll call it. And before we get into the message today that is not just for fathers, it's for all of us, I just want to pray that God's, that God's word would be elevated above all other words and that God would guard hearts, that God would, would heal today wounds that maybe have not healed. Let's go to him in prayer. Father, we love you. And Father, we honor you today on Father's Day as the ultimate father. And Father, I just pray for every heart in this room that your fathering love, your fathering arm would just come alongside each and every one of us. And God, that you would bring healing where it needs to happen. God, where earthly fathers have left wounds. And Father, I pray that you would heal. And Father, that you would prepare our heart to, to hear your word and to receive what you have for us today. We love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. I'm going to do my very best in the next minutes. Who knows how long it'll be. And then we're going to baptize some people, but we're going we're gonna to walk through, finish Colossians chapter 1, and we're going to look at a little bit of chapter 2 today. And there are several things that I'll be real honest, I just kind of feel kind of all over the place a little bit about this message, but I know that God's going to orchestrate it the way it needs to, because God literally last night and this morning downloaded some different things in my heart for this message, so I'm just believing that it's his words, not mine, coming out. This message that we're bringing today is part of a series that we're spending the entire summer in. We're calling it Summer United, and we're walking through the book of Colossians together. And the goal this summer is for us to just, again, be united, and we're going to spend time together. That's what our cookouts are all about, just relationally building that connection up between us, but also growing and being united together in spiritual growth and learning from God's Word and becoming who he wants us to be. Paul started this letter by laying out this prayer for the people of Colossae. And he said, I pray that you would just be full of all the knowledge, all the understanding, and all the wisdom that, that God brings you, of God's word, of God's ways, so that you can live the life that he's called you to, a life that is worthy of him. That's why we're here, right? We want to one version says to walk in a manner that pleases him. And that's our goal for our life. That's our goal for this letter. That's our goal for our time together. That we would become more of who God has called us to be. And then last week, that was such, it was a lot of fun. Josh and Amber and I, we, we kind of co-taught through the rest of it. And we talked about how we have to remember Jesus and this place that he is at, that it's all about Jesus and we have to stay connected to Jesus, come under the headship or the lordship of Jesus. Outside of that, everything, everything is messed up. And then we ended by Paul offering this encouragement. Remember what God has done for you. Remember the place that you were at before he rescued you and make sure that you continue. Keep going. Don't get sidetracked. Don't get distracted. It says don't shift. A lot of us, we, 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 we start off and we're walking with Jesus and, and yeah, we're excited for the life that God has for us, but then we get distracted and we, we shift even just so slightly off the trajectory that he has for us. And he's saying, I know sometimes it's difficult. I know it's not always easy, but keep going. Stay focus, be steadfast, be stable. And we're going to pick up in verse 24. And Paul is now going to tell them why he could say what he just said before. You got to stay the course. You got to make sure you keep going because listen, I know how hard it can be. Trust me. And starting verse 24, we're going to read a little bit. Check it out. It's going to be on the screen if you don't have your Bibles. And I'm reading out of the, the ESV English Standard Version. And it says, Now I rejoice in my sufferings. Everybody say rejoice. For your sake. I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. And in my flesh, 
I'm filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed. Everybody say revealed. But now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles, pay attention to that word, are the riches of the glory of this mystery. What is the mystery? It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Paul is writing to Gentiles. The word Gentile simply means those who are not Jewish. Because the Jewish people believed that God's promise was just for them. It was just for, for them and the generations to follow. But what Jesus did at the cross is he made God's promises... God's covenant, his holy promise to his people, available to all of humanity. The riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him, it's Jesus that we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. And for this, I toil. I'm working. Struggling. Everybody say struggling. With all his energy that he powerfully works within me. I'm calling this message today, if you want to take notes, if you want to remember it. I'm calling it Fighters, Farmers, and Fathers. Fighters, farmers, and fathers. And I'm sure this analogy applies to many other things, but these all start with F, and I think you're going to help remember them, okay? Fighters, farmers, and fathers. All three things that require a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work that no one sees for a victory that everybody sees. I love, I love fighting movies. Anybody love fighting movies? I don't watch like boxing and UFC as much as I really wish I did, okay? Because I do love it when I do. But, but I love, like, like one of my all-time favorite movies is, is Rocky. And yes, they are all, like seven of them are one movie to me. So I include them all together, all right? I just love them all. Some cheesy parts, yes, but I love it. And there's a line in the movie that, that his trainer, Rocky's trainer Mick, says to him, that I love and I think, I think just underscores this point. That for every 45 minute fight, you have to train for 45,000 minutes. That's how he says it, okay? That was my attempt at a Mick accent. Okay, for every 45 minute fight, you have to train for 45,000 minutes. We understand that. And any athlete knows that. It's the training that no one sees. It's the, the pain that no one sees that actually produces what everyone wants. Paul used these analogies a lot if you read throughout his letters and his gospels. He, he talks about athletes. He talks about farmers. He talks about soldiers. And writing to his spiritual son, Timothy, he has the heart of a father. And he, he throws out these analogies to them. We understand farming. This is a farming community. Our farmers are really struggling right now. And I, I believe that God's people should literally be in prayer over this for the seed to be sown because there's so much that comes from that. Food, it, it contributes to our economy. And we know that farming, farming is something you do by faith. Right? You are planting seed in faith of getting a crop. Someone who is training, an athlete that is training, they are training by faith, hoping that their preparation will produce a victory. The same is true in fatherhood. You are working. You are struggling. 
you're about to lose your mind half the time. If I have to repeat this one more time, like the minute you become a dad, you inherit the dad voice. Like you don't have it before. You can't try it. I mean, it, it will not come out. But the minute you are a dad, you get a dad voice, right? And you have to exercise your dad voice sometimes. Fatherhood's hard. But I'm working right now with my kids for a, a result that I can't see quite yet. I think my kids are great. I love my kids, but I'm, I'm not just raising kids. I'm raising future adults, future, a future husband. I'm raising future wives, mothers, fathers. Like That's what I'm working towards. There's a pain in life, suffering that many of us have, struggling. In verse 29, Paul says, for this toil, this work, I'm struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. That word struggling literally is translated the word contend. It is the word used to paint the picture of an athletic performance, a contest. And I love that Paul starts this part of the letter by saying, I rejoice in my sufferings. Did you know that you can rejoice in suffering? You can rejoice in suffering if you reframe it. If you look at it different. If you change your perspective on it. You see, Paul said, my pain that I'm going through right now, which he's in prison, he's been arrested for preaching the gospel. And many of the people that he's writing to, they are, they are heartbroken over this. And they're, they're sad for him. And he's saying, don't you dare feel sorry for me. Yeah, what I'm going through right now, it's tough. I'm struggling. It's hard. I'm walking forward, but it's difficult. But you need to know there is purpose in my pain. That I'm working like a fighter, like a farmer, like a father. I'm working for something that I can't quite see. It's starting to unfold a little bit before my eyes, but I'm working for you so that you can be mature. So that all of the ways of God, the word of God would be fully known. That this mystery would be revealed all over the world. I'm learning and have learned and and continuing to learn in my life that there are really two types of pain. There's pain from something and pain for something. Pain from something or pain for something. And I believe that at any given moment, those two can switch. You can view what has happened to you, what you have experienced that is pain from something, and it can be turned and used for pain towards something. And you can get focused on that thing that you're after, what you're working toward, and if you lose perspective, it can clearly be something that is happening to you. Pain from and pain for. I kid you not, there are two times, two times a year, right now, in the winter. I have become that guy, okay? Just three years ago at our men's conference, I fractured my left heel by jumping over a wall in a man challenge race thing. I was so excited for this. I mean, I was going to nail this because I'd been working out and I felt pretty good. Landed this like six foot wall and like, oh, never broke a bone in my body. Okay. And I fractured my heel and I finished the race. I just, anytime I tell that story, I have to say that part, but I finished the race. Okay. But right now, literally last night, I began to feel it. It hurt. I remembered the pain of something. And every winter, yeah, that's the guy I've become. Like, oh, what weather's changing. I can feel it in my bones, right? Like, like literally, I feel it. I'm like, what is that? I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> but we all have pain from something. And I think we, 
I'm hoping that maybe some point in your life, maybe right now, if not, maybe today will be the catalyst for you. But you also experience pain for something. That I, I, I've, I've worked out before with a trainer because I would never put myself through this. I've worked out with a trainer to the point of literally throwing up, of, of literal, literal tears. Have you ever worked out to where you're crying? Hey, can it, hey, hey, men, can any men raise their hand and proudly say, like, yeah, I've done that? Anybody? Yeah. Like, it's come, yeah. <laughs> like, but, but you, but you can in that moment, you can be distracted by this pain that is happening to you, or you can choose the perspective of saying, no, this pain is actually propelling me toward something. And that's what Paul is talking about here. He says, I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. I'm working, I'm struggling, this toil, this labor that I'm under right now. It's for your benefit. And he says, I'm filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. That doesn't seem to line up with the rest of the Bible. Can I just encourage you? You will find some things that you're like, wait a minute. But over here they said this. Wrestle with that. Look at it deeper. Dig in. Because at face value, you can say like, well, so there was something lacking in what Christ did on the cross? Because that's what it sounds like he's saying. But it's not. What Paul is saying here, there is nothing lacking from the cross. The cross accomplished in its fullness everything that the cross was meant to accomplish. The cross was meant to be a sacrifice to bring you close to God. To pay for sins so that you and I can have a relationship with God. Nothing can add to that. Nothing can take away from it. But what Paul is talking about lacking here is his own affliction. It's his own suffering. Or his own responsibility. In other words, I know that I'm going to have to work in this life. That yes, I work from a place of victory and I stand in what Jesus has done, but just what Jesus did on the cross is not going to produce this church. It's not going to grow this group of people. It's not going to help you walk through the things that you, need to help, that you need to walk through. He's saying, I have a responsibility in this. We all have a responsibility in this life to use our life, to use our resources, to use our talents, to use our pain, to use our experience, to use whatever we have in our lives, whatever we have walked through in this life, to use it for something. Look at the language Paul uses. I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me. Paul viewed the pain that he walked through, through a lens of stewardship. Everything Paul did, everything Paul had, he didn't look at it as his own. You know what it means to be a steward? It means to be a manager of something, not an owner. You know what I see in my life? I, I, everything I have in my life, I try. Sometimes it's harder than others, but I view my life through the lens of stewardship. My kids are not mine. I'm just stewarding them while I have them. My passion, my dreams, they're not mine. My money, it's not mine. My time, it's not mine. My home, that's the hardest for me because I like my space, but it's not mine. <laughs> it's not mine. And even what Paul says here, even my pain, I don't view as mine. I view it as something that I'm giving to God. It's in his hands and he's going to use it. All to make this mystery known. What is the mystery that's no longer a mystery? It's Christ in you 
the hope of glory. Paul is talking about this present, current, and future assurance that we can have in our lives. Christ in me. He's in me. That should literally make you stop before you start your day, before you do anything with your life. And remember that his spirit is in me. Christ in me and attached to that connection is this hope of glory that I have, that I'm going to be with him now and forever, that there's life on the other side of this one. This assurance. How sure are you right now in your life? and your walk with God, and the promises that he has for you. Because this is what Paul is working towards. Him, everybody say him. Him we proclaim. Warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. Like a good farmer understands a crop coming to fruition. It's ultimate maturity. That's what we're after. That's what Paul is saying to this church. He's talking about the work that he's supposed to do. That he's a part of. The cross accomplished what it was meant to accomplish. But God attached purpose to the inside of each of us that we are meant to accomplish. We accomplish it because of the cross. But we, we, we cannot relegate our authority and just think that what Jesus has done is all that there is. Because it's now my job to make known what Jesus has done. It's my job to put in the effort with my life and everything that I have to make sure people can know this God that I know. Do you see it, church? This is what I pray grips our hearts today. The work that is still to be done. Jesus said in Luke 10, the harvest is plentiful. But what did he say after that? It's the workers that are few. That means there are are too many people, too many people who bear his name, who aren't working toward this common goal that Paul lays out for us. But I love what he says in verse 29. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. Everybody say it's his energy. It's his strength. You don't have to repeat now, okay? Just the one time. It's his timing, it's It's all his. Paul says, yeah, I'm working hard. Yeah, I'm contending. Yeah, it's not always easy, but I'm doing it with a strength. I'm doing it with an energy that is not my own. It's available to each and every one of us. I want to end today with this. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, and I'm going to run through this pretty quick. This is what Paul was working towards This is our prayer for you today. For I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged. I pray today that your heart is encouraged, that today and as you read this letter and as you spend time with God and you connect with his people, that it would literally be like courage being instilled inside of you, implanted in you. Paul says, this is what I'm putting all this effort in for. This is what I'm working for. This is what I'm contending for, that you would be encouraged, that you know you're not alone, that you can do it, that you're going to make it. That your hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love. I believe Paul was praying for unity. Unity. Knit together in love. That when we are knit together, we are part of a bigger picture. Which means we're part of a greater purpose together than we are on our own. Knit 
together in love to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Paul is praying for them and he's working toward their full assurance. I want you as a church to be so confident in what God has for you, to be so confident in what God's word says, to what God's word promises, that we walk around with a full assurance. There's a spirit of insecurity on many of us in this room. We're insecure in life because we're insecure in what God has for us and who God is and who we are because of him. And I am praying today for a full assurance to grip our hearts. That we know who we are. We know whose we are. We know what belongs to us. Christ in us. The hope of glory. Verse 4, I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. That no one may water you down. No one would distract you with, with reasonable arguments. For though I am absent in body, you need to know this. I'm with you in spirit. You're not alone. Rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Verse 23 of chapter 1, he says not to shift. Because he could see, he could sense that starting to happen. And here he, he praises their good order and their firmness. Were they always in order? Were they always firm in their faith? Probably not. But like a good leader, Paul is calling out what he wants to see in them. And my prayer for you today is really simple. Katie, you can come up. We're going to close. My question for you really is, what are you contending for? What are you contending towards? What are you working towards? I'm praying over every single one of us today that we would have the spirit of a fighter. That we would do the work behind the scenes that no one else sees. The hard work. The, the contending that has to happen. I pray that we have the spirit of a fighter. And I pray that we have the mind of a farmer. That we know that results don't come overnight. That we're going to put in the work. We're going to put in the sweat equity in life that we need to and in relationships that we need to so that we can have the fruit that we want. I'm praying the spirit of a fighter and I'm praying the mind of a farmer and I'm praying that every single one of us embrace the heart of the Father. Even if you're not a father, you can have the heart of the Father. A heart that says, I'm going to Use whatever I can in my life to work for the benefit of those around me. To use my life, to use my time, to use my resources, to use my talents, everything I can. My story, even my pain, for the benefit of those around me. That's what Paul prayed. That's my prayer for you today. Would you bow your heads all over this place? Father, we love you. God, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your word that is spoken. We thank you for life change that we're going to celebrate in just a moment. And God, I just pray right now for every heart. That Holy Spirit, you're moving through your word that has been spoken. God, you're moving. And you're stirring. And I pray, Father, that we would be sensitive to it. God, that all of this, everything that we do is so that people can know that mystery that's no longer a mystery. That's what our life is for. That's what we're working towards. Father, I pray that today pain would be reframed. That any suffering, any struggling that we're experiencing, that we can reframe it, God. That it would not be pain from something. That we would not be running from something, but we would be running towards something. And whatever pain we're walking through, God, 
we would offer it to you so that you can use it for our benefit and the benefit of others. Father, I pray for every heart in this room that doesn't know you. It doesn't have a relationship with you. God, that Jesus would be clearly seen. That the cross would be clearly seen. And what it meant for us. And that we don't have to, the one area where we don't have to work and we don't have to strive is for your love, for your approval. For God, you showed us that when you went to the cross. You did everything so that we could be in relationship with you. And I'm just praying for the hearts right now that are not in relationship with you and they know it. That they would begin to be softened, to accept what you've done. With every head bowed and eyes closed, you're here in this place, you're watching online and you don't have a relationship with God. We're going to give you the opportunity right now to begin one. There's nothing you can do to earn it. The working that we're talking about, the striving, is all about using your life for his glory and the benefit of others. But there's nothing you can do to work, to earn favor with God. He demonstrated it all on the cross. And if you're here today and you know you've never made that decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life, I'm not talking about church attendance. I'm not talking about being religious. I'm talking about you and the God of the universe being in a relationship with each other. If you don't have that today, you can have it before you leave. We're going to pray a prayer in just a moment, and I'm going to, we're going to pray it right there in your seat, but I'm going to count to three, and I'm just going to ask you, if that's you today, to just acknowledge and say, that's me. As we pray that prayer today, I'm ready to begin a relationship with Jesus. Come on, one, two, three. That's you. Anybody at all? Yeah. Come on, so proud of you. Come on, freedom. Let's pray this out with those who are making this decision today. Let's pray with boldness. Say, Jesus, right now, I give you my life. I give you control. Forgive me for all my sins. And for trying to do life my way, I believe you died for me and you rose from the dead to give me new life. I receive it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, can we give it up for those who made decisions today? We're so proud of you. So proud of you. So proud of you.